tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Started with animation. You might hear a vacuum cleaner in the background because my colleague and friend Elke from the next door studio probably broke something, glass or whatever. Uh, we're gonna talk about in betweens today, actually about breakdowns. What do we need them for? I think it's good to know that they are there. Where do we find them? hover the mouse over the timeline here, right mouse click, and then you see under keys, convert to breakdown. This only works if you already have a keyframe there, and then you can convert it to a breakdown key. We'll see what this does in a minute. Also, when you're under animation, you find key and set a breakdown key. That sets, sets a new, brand new breakdown key into your animation. Basically, it is proportional modification. That's how I would call it. We just create a text. And now we're gonna animate the rotation of that T. How do we do this? Well, pretty simple, really. Uh, we go to the frame number one and we press the key S. That sets a keyframe for this object here. Now we go to the very end, control A. I want to rotate it in this axis, which is the X axis, by 10 rotations. And 10 rotations is 10 times 360 degrees. So I type in 3600 here. And I set another keyframe, pressing the key S. Now when I run the animation, it accelerates at the beginning and it decelerates at the end. This is a very common thing. Uh, if you want to know why that is, the acceleration and deceleration, uh, go to Windows, Animation Editors and open the Graph Editor. And the Graph Editor shows you in the rotation X, you find it on the left side here, this line here, when you press a, while hovering with the mouse over this empty field, sort of, you see that line, it's a curved line. It means it slowly starts rotating, it accelerates and it decelerates towards the end. If you want to change this, for example, in order to not decelerate towards the end, you just pick this keyframe here and click on this icon here. It breaks the tangent, it makes this flat, so it still starts slowly, but uh, it ends pretty harsh. So let us see the difference. Slow start, acceleration, acceleration, and it does not slow down, it all of a sudden stops. Let's extend the frame range here to 140 so we see the stop properly. Accelerating, accelerating, and stop all of a sudden. So uh, this is standard key frames and um, now we want to talk about poses. So let's set a keyframe right here in between. For example, um, let's type in 1300 here. And set another keyframe by pressing S, red stroke here. Nothing really changes. It goes through that keyframe. And in the graph editor, which I minimized here, you now see that extra keyframe, which is here. Now, um, let us produce another keyframe right here, maybe for 2300. And I set another key. So now we have a keyframe at the beginning, two in between which don't hurt, and one at the end. Now, um, when we want to accelerate towards the end, we can do this. We just move it to the right, and this means the rotation at the very end will really accelerate dramatically. Let's undo this. I want to show you what happens with 
this key when we move it to the right or to the left. Press and hold the shift uh, key on the keyboard in order to move it to the right and left. When you move this keyframe, the neighboring keyframes don't move. They don't do anything. Now, if you want to move this keyframe, say, a little bit further over here, you would like this keyframe to follow. Now, you can pick both of them and move both, both of them over here. You can do that. But the breakdown key is meant for doing this job for you. So let us pick this keyframe here and convert it right mouse click and keys and convert it to a breakdown. Now watch out what's um, happening to the red stroke. It gets green. So here it looks basically the same but we have a green keyframe now which is called a breakdown key. And when we move it to the left or right it does the same process really. The neighboring keyframes stay at the same position but if you move this key now this does not stay in the same position. It will move proportionally into that direction and when you move the keyframe over here the breakdown key will follow in a proportional way. This is extremely elegant for character animation for example for decelerating or accelerating a walk and it is a real flexible in-between, that's how I would call it. If you want to end the animations uh, sooner, not at key uh, 120, but earlier, the breakdown key follows. If I move this, you see all other keys stay at the same position. So it's about the breakdown key is holding a position in the middle but um, it moves according to the neighboring real keyframes. And that's all I wanted to show you. You might be interested in a website like this one. It's uh, called bloopanimation.com. It's one of several which talk about this. And here we have a nice sentence it says step three is blocking. Once we're happy with our key poses, we start breaking down the movement from each pose to the next by adding in-betweens, also known as breakdown poses or passing poses. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.